So over the last year, this specialization not only saw the highest average salary at $179,000, but they also saw the largest increase year over year. That role is... Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Hire.com recently released their state of software engineering report, and it gives a lot of insight into what is actually going on in the tech industry from a bird's eye point of view. In this video, I'm gonna give you my top five key takeaways that I feel like are most relevant to you. For example, did the layoffs affect the salaries that we earned in 2022? Are more job openings now in office as opposed to remote? We've all seen the headlines of the mass layoffs at big tech companies, but we need to remember that these news headlines, they're meant to invoke a sense of fear. They're anecdotal evidence and they can make the situation feel a lot worse than it actually is. We need to take a step back, look at the data and see what is actually going on. And I think this report really helps us do that. So keep watching if you wanna find out. So the first key takeaway is that the layoffs shifted the interview requests to uh, software engineers with more experience. 72% of interview requests on Hired went to candidates with six or more years of experience up from 64% before the layoffs happened. Given the fact that interest rates are so high right now and we might be coming into a recession, it's easy to see why companies are less willing to take a risk on a junior dev straight out of school. From the data, it's clear that the cooling down of the tech industry is disproportionately affecting engineers with less experience. I was talking to a recent computer science grad in Vancouver, BC, where I'm from, and he told me he submitted approximately 400 applications since September of last year. So it's been about six months and he's only landed a few interviews and no offers. I told him that if he's submitting 400 applications and only getting a handful of interviews, there's probably something wrong with his resume. And he said that he thought the same thing, but many of his peers are experiencing the same level of responses and so it's likely that it's just a tough job market right now for newbies by the way if you're a new grad and you are currently job hunting let me know in the comments below what's been your experience have you been getting a lot of responses or rejections I want to hear your story keep in mind that if you are a new grad or a junior with not a lot of experience I mean, you might have a harder time finding a job in the short term but there's a lot of people in the same boat as you and be optimistic that this is temporary and the economy will shift again very soon. I've mentioned this before, but these mass layoffs, as high profile as they are, they're one-off events and they're not necessarily representative of the industry as a whole. Despite all the fear-mongering headlines, unemployment in the tech sector remains at an all-time low of 1.5% compared to the overall average in the US, which is 3.4%. Fun fact, if you've ever thought about being an actor or an actress, the unemployment rate for actors in the US is 90%. So even though Meta and Amazon have both laid off tens of thousands of employees, it still comprises a tiny portion of the entire tech labor market. But obviously they get a disproportionate amount of attention because they're fang. And despite the fact that they've laid off so many employees, you can see in this chart here that this just brings their headcount back to pre-pandemic levels. Now, did the layoffs have any sort of negative impact on the salaries that were offered? Hired examined the data across many of the markets in the US and Canada and came up with this graph. I will say some of the graphs in this report can be really difficult to interpret, but from this graph, it looks like the markets that offer the highest pay are San Francisco, Seattle, and New York. No surprises there, right? But what's interesting is that the dots on this graph indicate the change of salaries since the beginning of the layoffs to now, 2023. So it's trying to measure the impact that the layoffs may have had on salaries. As you can see, the impact does seem to be pretty low. Remote salaries remained relatively the same but the report also mentioned that the salaries for junior dev took a greater hit than the salaries for more experienced developers. And to corroborate this data, Pragmatic Engineer, which is a software engineer, a newsletter that I subscribe to, visualized data from all of the job postings for software engineers on Indeed.com. His graph shows that while there aren't as many software engineer job postings as there were June of last year, 2022, when, you know, the job market was crazy hot, we've kind of cooled down and gone back to the baseline level. So there are still jobs, they're just not as many as there were in uh, June of last year. Now, despite the fact that Apple and Google are implementing these high profile return to office policy, 
days, the number of job openings for remote software developers remains really strong. You can see in this chart that remote roles were pretty rare before COVID. About 90% of the engineering positions listed pre-COVID were in office and they hit a low of 27% in June of 2022. So a drastic change from the vast majority of the positions being in office to the majority of positions now they're remote for better or worse though since then there's been a slight increase in roles being now in office only as opposed to remote so i think this might actually be an interesting data point to keep an eye on are we all going to start going back to the office i don't know let me know in the comments below whether or not you're working from home hybrid or in office that being said survey after survey have shown that software engineers overwhelmingly prefer working from home to the office so as long as the demand for engineers remains really high and we have some leverage to negotiate, I think remote work is here to stay. According to the survey, 21% of engineers would quit immediately if they were asked by their employers to come into the office full time. And another 49% would start looking for another job. The fourth key takeaway is that backend engineers remain highest in demand. Now, this is interesting because in the past, it was always the full stack engineers that garnered the most interest and interviews. But this year, backend engineers won by a slight margin. According to Hired's CTO, it's simply the fact that more enterprise sized companies have started to use Hired's platform and they tend to have a larger budget and they can hire specialized roles such as separate front-end and back-end developers as opposed to like smaller startups that can only afford to hire a couple full stack devs that can do front-end and back-end. So this data point is really a reflection of the change in the sample size, not necessarily a reflection of the change in demand. That being said, if you're looking to be in a high demand position, full stack and back end looks like the way to go as they are the most in demand by a wide margin. So over the last year, this specialization not only saw the highest average salary at $179,000, but they also saw the largest increase year over year. That role is a natural language processing. If you've ever used autocorrect or asked Siri to play your favorite song, which is everybody, NLP is used to understand what the intent of your question is. You know, not surprisingly, given the fact that AI and machine learning is growing exponentially and becoming a core component of our everyday lives, the demand for engineers with expertise in natural language processing or NLP is also exploding. To become a software engineer specializing in NLP, most roles will require you to have a bachelor's or master's degree in computer science with a specialization in machine learning or AI. So like I mentioned, NLP engineers received salaries with an average of around $179,000 US compared to a full stack engineer at 160. Even more exciting for those of you looking to get into NLP is that this area is growing like crazy and the demand is going to continue to grow for the foreseeable future. I mean, just look at how widespread ChatGPT has become in just a few short months. Not only does this specialization have the highest salary, it also had the highest growth in salary at 10% from 2021 to 2022. Now that being said, I always recommend taking these trends with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, whether you make $179,000 or $160,000, it won't really make a difference in the quality of your life. Ultimately, it shouldn't be the deciding factor between whether you become a front-end engineer or, or an AI engineer. Trends come and go. There will always be another hot language or technology that you need to learn. I'll bet that a really talented front-end engineer will always out-earn a mediocre NLP engineer any day. At the end of the day, you should really be picking your path and specialization based mainly on what you're interested in and what you're good at, not really these market trends. Plus, all of these roles on this chart will be in high demand for the foreseeable future. Final note, according to their survey, only 17% of respondents said that they picked their role based on what is hot in the market. So I think most people agree that there are so many other factors to consider when deciding which path to take and salary and market demands should only be one of those factors. And finally, if you've been laid off or you're recently graduated, 
try and not let these high profile mass layoffs scare you. The data does show that yes, the market isn't as hot as it may have been in the middle of 2022, but it's not like all of the jobs are gone. It's just dropped back down to the pre peak levels. If you get discouraged, remind yourself that tech companies are really sensitive to overall economic conditions. And so once the economy picks back up again, things will be better. This is just temporary. We just have to grind it out. If you're preparing for your job interviews, be sure to check out my latest video on common interview questions that people tend to get wrong. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.